the only one that has been suspicious of John Dumelo and Yvonne Nelson's friendship. As in those two are super close. So for people like me, well not people like me because now I sort of believe that they are just friends, but for people who still have doubt about their friendship, John has something to tell you. The truth of the matter is, me and Yvonne will be buddies. Like, Menyanko Brebo, if you don't understand it, it means we are very good friends, nothing more, nothing less. I mean, we are just... Like, like, we are good friends. You see, he has cleared the air now. They are just good friends. So all of you that need to quench your thirst, Yvonne is not a hindrance. Welcome to this episode of The Gist with Toyosi Phillips. I'm your host, Toyosi Phillips. The Gist. <laughs> guys thank you for watching another week another birthday this time it is award-winning actress and broadcaster madam taiwo ajay license she turned 74 this week when you're talking about the pillars of the nigerian entertainment industry her name cannot be left out this is someone that even the president of nigeria recognized and made an officer of the order of the niger in 2006 Highly respected woman. Happy birthday, ma. We wish you long life and good health. And Olamide Bado became a father again last weekend. His long-term girlfriend gave birth to a boy, their second child, and the baby has been named Batifelri Maximiliano Adedeji. I wonder where Maximiliano came from. Some news outlets are reporting that he'll be having a low-key wedding sometime this year, and we just want to say congratulations on the baby and happy preparations. And the band celebrated his 10th year anniversary in the music industry. He kicked this off with a party hosted by Amber Rose at Ocean View in Lagos. And of course, a lot of entertainers were there to support him, including Shay Shay, who definitely threw shade at Amber Rose in this interview. All right, aside the fact that the band is here, Amber Rose is here as well. Yes. Mad? Well, not really, but I, I think it's great. It's great that she's here. I don't know what she does. What does she do? I know she's she, got... she twerks on Instagram. She got some pretty nice pictures. But she she's doesn't do anything. She's married? She was married. She was. Kim K doesn't do anything as well. But at least Kim K has a reality show. True. And she has a clothing line. True. So and she's a model, so okay. yeah. <laughs> you mentioned. Shay Shay of life. What does Amaros do? Really? You are funny. Hip TV host, you too, you are funny. Anyway, there were reports that Amaros left the event angrily, reports that have been refuted by the band's PR team. And the band has said that there just might be a collaboration between him and Don Jazzy again. But of course, it will come with some conditions. Nevertheless, I'm looking forward to music by those two. Those two made pure magic. It wasn't music, it was magic. The band Don Jazzy, Whiskey Banky, when they called the band Don Jazzy. Those were the teams. Those were the, ah, I don't even know the English. But those were the teams. They made pure magic. When they call, by the way, is said to be dropping a new album this year, seven years after Mushi to More Hits. Mushi to More Hits was an album and a half. That was one of the few albums that I didn't need to skip a track. Every track made sense. So I really hope this album does not disappoint because I think One Day is super, super talented. Meanwhile, Lupita is making headlines again. Oh, I think I should just make this in the Lupita show because for like three weeks now I've been talking about Lupita. But yes, she's making minor headlines. Apparently, she's no longer with Kanan, her boyfriend, the Waving Flag singer. Yeah. They're saying they split up late last year, but kept it quiet. So something funny happened last year that I just thought to share with you guys. I was in Brooklyn with a friend and we ran into Kanan. I wasn't sure it was him, so I was like, are you Kanan? Like randomly. And he was like, yes. I said, show me your ID. Is a lie, you're a lie, show me your ID. He's like, no, I'm not going to show you my ID. Anyway, we ended up chatting a bit and taking pictures. And then he said he had to leave. This was like at 10 at night. Jokingly, I was like, why do you have to leave? Is Lupita waiting for you? And he said, yes. And then he caught himself and was like, what? No, 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 I just need to leave. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. It's so sad that they are no longer together. I heard Lupita called it off. Poor boy. Anyway, this is the nicest picture we took that day. Hmm. And I'm sure by now you've all heard that Whitney Houston's daughter, 21-year-old Bobby Christina Brown, is in a coma. She was found unconscious in a bathtub last weekend in her home in Atlanta. Now, reports from the police said that no drugs were found after the first search, 
But according to TMZ, a second search was conducted and this time drugs were found. The type of drugs have not been specified, but drugs were found and seized. And what is particularly strange and frightening about this whole incident is that Whitney died under similar circumstances almost three years ago. To find her daughter unconscious like that is scary. Some people are saying that she got depressed after watching the Whitney movie, which was first aired on Lifetime two weeks ago. And a part of me is wondering if she experimented with drugs just to know what her mom saw in it, just to know how it made her mom feel. Please, I feel the need to preach right now. Parents, you need to be careful what you expose your kids to. I've seen children who grew up in homes where domestic violence was a regular thing become violent. I've also seen children whose parents used to smoke pick up smoking just to know what it felt like. Kids are very impressionable, so please get your life together because you're accountable for a lot of your kids' actions. We'll be back after this break. Hey, this is Tammy Dollface, and you're watching The Gist with Toyosi Phillips. Keep it locked. Welcome back. Whew, I had to get that off. Anyway, we're about to see Oprah do a lot more acting. She's teaming up with the director of Selma for a drama series on OWN. That's Oprah Winfrey Network. Ava DuVernay, that's the director of Selma, is going to create a series of Queen Sugar, a novel by Natalie Basil, and Oprah is going to have recurring roles in it. I like that Oprah is expressing herself in every way she feels like. Production on this will start later this year, so all aspiring actors and actresses, call your agent and look for the casting director because I'm sensing this will be a big one. Meanwhile, Linda Ikeji may be facing a lawsuit very soon. This story is long, so please just follow me as I'm going. So remember last week I told you about actress Tonya Imaku's marriage being in jeopardy, that her husband had even changed his Facebook status to separated. Well, when the news hit the blogs, Linda Ikeji did a story on it, but she went deeper. There have been rumors of Toei Aimaku and Funke Akidele, another actress, not being friends at all, like they don't see eye to eye. When the story of Toei's marriage crumbling broke, Funke Akidele put up this meme on Instagram and took it down minutes later. But you know Linda now, she had already captured the image and alleged in a blog post that this unto was to spite Toei Aimaku over her marital issues. Funky Akindele did not find this funny and had her lawyers write to Linda to one, take the blog post down and two, do a retraction of the false story within 24 hours of receiving their letter. This letter was dated January 25. And if we can see the letter, that means Linda too has seen the letter. But so far, the post is still up, at least at the time of recording this, and no retraction has been done. So this may be going to court and guess what? I will keep you posted. And I interviewed the lawyer and CEO of Chocolate City last week. No, we didn't talk about Linda and Funke Akindele. Maybe we should have. We talked about entertainers in politics and the upcoming elections. It was quite insightful. Here's a clip from it. Mr. Aldemir Corey, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. So I want to talk about the entertainment industry now. You've been in the industry for about 10 years now. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so what do you that's think correct. is the reason for entertainers going into politics? The truth is, there is a lot of power in entertainment. And when you're in the, um, either as an actor or a, or a music star or somebody or TV personality, these are all platforms that, gi uh, that give you acceptance and give you publicity beyond your immediate scope. You'll find the full interview on Sahara TV's page. And now it's time for what? Fab, fave, five. This is my top five anything list. So as a voracious reader, well, I used to be, I haven't read in a while. The last thing I read was by Khaled Husseini, I think. Anyway, I'm paying homage to African literature. So I'll be giving my five favorite African books. This is in no particular order because it was so difficult for me to decide. So I'll just start with Say You're One of Them by Father Uwem Akman. It's a book of short stories and it gave me the chills. I loved every story in it. Next is The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives by Lola Shonei. This book is hilarious and deep. Like, it's really deep. I loved it as well. I Do Not Come To You By Chance by Adele B. Mwabani makes my list as well. I call it the Yao Yao book. If you want to know about scam emails, just read this book. And then 
Americana by Chimamanda Adichie. This book is actually significant to me because I read it a few weeks before coming to school here. So when certain things happened, I was like, oh, that's what Ifemelu felt. That's what that book said. <laughs> yeah, so Americana is definitely on my list. Last on this Fab Faith 5 list is on Black Sister Street by Chika Unigwe. It's about African girls who found themselves as prostitutes in Europe. This book made me gasp. Like, it, it, in fact, it just had to be on this list. So please recommend good African books for me to read. I honestly need to start reading again. And we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. You know the usual now. Please like and comment on this video and also subscribe to this channel to know what I'm up to when I'm not recording. Follow me on Twitter at Toyosi Phillips and on Instagram at Toyosi underscore Phillips. You can also like our Facebook page at The Gist with Toyosi Phillips and our Instagram page at The Gist with Toyosi Phillips, one word. Guys, for real, you can be everything you want to be. See you next week. Bye.